Christ. How nicely the model is coming along, Mr. Merrick. I've come to say happy Christmas and that I hope you will enjoy this ring and remember your friend by it. Your Grace, thank you. I'm very pleased to have made your acquaintance. Please accept this silverback brush and comb for Christmas, Mr. Merrick. With many thanks, Countess. I am very pleased to have made your acquaintance. Here's the silver top walking stick, Merrick. Make you a regular Piccadilly exquisite. Keep up the good work. Self-help is the best help. Example to us all. Thank you, Lord John. Thank you. Very pleased to have made your acquaintance. Her Royal Highness, Princess Alexandra. The happiest of Christmases to you, Mr. Merrick. Her Royal Highness has brought you a signed photograph of herself. It is the uh, treasure of my possessions, Your Royal Highness. Well, I have written to His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, to thank him for the pheasants in Woodcock he sent. You are a credit to Mr. Treves, Mr. Merrick. Mr. Treves, you are a credit to medicine, to England, and to Christendom. I am so very pleased to have made your acquaintance. Good news, John. Bertie says we may use the royal box whenever I like. Mrs. Keppel says it gives unique perspective. And for Christmas, I three handled razors and toothbrush. And a cigarette case, my boy, full of cigarettes. Thank you very much. Oh, look, Freddie, look, the model of St. Philip's. It is remarkable, I know. And I do it with just one hand, they all say. <laughs> you are an artist, John Merrick, an artist. Well, I, I, I did not begin to build it first, not till I saw what St. Philip's really was. It, it is not stone and steel and glass, it is an it, imitation of grace flying up and up from the mud. So I build my imitation of an imitation. But even in that, it's heaven to me, Mrs. Kendall. That thought's got a good line, John. Plato believed this was all a world of illusion, and that artists made illusions of illusions of heaven. So we're all just copies of... Originals? That's it. Who made the copies? God, the demiurge. <laughs> you should have used both hands, shouldn't you? <laughs> society, 
he becomes visibly more grotesque. It's proof definitive he is like me. Like his condition, which I make no sense of, I make no sense of mine. But the papers are saying you broke the contracts. They're saying you lost the money. Freddy, Freddy, if I was such a scoundrel, how would I dare face investors like yourself? A broken contract, sir. I never considered the actual contracts, just preliminary things, get the old deal out of the way. An actual contract is something between gentlemen, huh? And this attack on me shows they are no gentlemen. Now, now I'm only here to say that the company remains a terribly attractive proposition, don't you think? To recapitalize it. If you could spare enough. Uh, Mr. Gong, uh, how good to see you, just remarking how splendidly uh, Merrick thrives here, thanks to you and Freddie. You'll have to excuse me, Lord John, I have to take Frederick away from you. Got to keep him working, it's in his contract. Can't have him breaking his contract. That sort of thing makes the world fly apart. <laughs> yes, well, of course. <laughs> Sorry to see you so pressed, Lord John. I expect we'll be seeing a lot less of you around the London. Actually, I, uh... Over to you, actually, uh... Appointment to the city. Uh... Ready? Mr. Gorm? You have risen so high and so fast you've forgotten how to protect yourself. Break now. It does not seem right somehow. The man is a moral swamp. Isn't that clear yet? Is he, is he attractive? Deceit usually is. Is he friendly? Swindlers can be. Another loan? Not another cent. Now, I know, Frederick, it's your money, but I cannot tolerate you laboring like a navvy so that the London can represent caring and compassion passionate science, and have titled swindlers mocking up the pitch. He has destroyed himself so thoroughly and so rapidly you cannot doubt for an instant it wasn't his intention all along. He has broken the contracts, gambled the money away, lied, and, and like an infant sitting in his mess, he gurgles and he wants to do it again. Now, I, I, never mind details I don't want to know. Break and be glad. Don't hesitate. Today. The man is a one-man moral swamp. Don't get sucked in. Uh, have you seen the papers? Yes. Yes, terrible. Today, Frederick. Freddy? He has used us. I... I shall be all right. Come. John, I shan't be able to stay this visit. I have some things to unravel. Nurse Ireland and Stork. Friendly and respectful Frederick. All right, all right. I'll look in again in a few days. D d did I do something wrong? No. This is a hospital, not a marketplace. Don't forget it, ever. I'm, I'm sorry, not you. Me. Well, shall we leave today? Don't you think weaving might be fun? <laughs> so many things are fun. Most men really can't enjoy them. Their loss isn't it. I enjoy little activities which engage me. There's something ancient in it, I don't know, uh, before all this. Would you like to try it, John? F Frederick said I may stay here for life. And so you shall. If the fee is in trouble? Frederick is your protector, John. If the fee is in trouble? Who is this? Is it not your mother? She is pretty, isn't she? Will Frederick keep his word with me? His contract, Mrs. Kimball. 